Let's see, angry American attacks me. As an American, I apologize for this dude. Yeah, I mean, this guy looks like an Isaac Butterfield fan. I'm also a comedian. This guy's best joke, 100% comedian. I mean, Ryan's far more of a comedian than fucking Isaac Butterfield in terms of, like, being funny. So if you don't know, a uh, friend of the show, Ryan, Mr. Beard, did an incredible video taking down Isaac Butterfield. Uh, Noah Sampson also did a video, like, on, around the same time, and I was also planning a video on Isaac Butterfield, and I still might do one eventually. But he responded to Ryan's video, and I haven't even seen it yet. Ryan responded a while, because this is from a while back. Yeah, it's from May. 31st, and then Ryan ended up responding to this, but I didn't see either. So I'm gonna see what he said back to Ryan. Because the, the majority of what Ryan criticized him for, I believe, was uh, his fat phobia. But this was a few months ago, so I imagine he's just gonna say, I don't, I don't know, fat phobia is not so bad. It's funny. It's a joke. You can't take a joke. Ladies and gentlemen, it's happened again. I've been attacked from far left leaning YouTube. They've uh, also, this guy loves to act like he's getting attacked and canceled, like, constantly. It's his favorite thing. I think he has a kink for it. Come after me, the mad woke people, the mad lefties, all that type of shit. They've come after me because they- Yeah, he's wearing an anti-vegan shirt. ...don't like me. They really don't like me. And when you go into these videos and you read the comments, you think to yourself, Holy fucking shit, I might jump off a bridge! But then you rem- <laughs> What? Man, poor him. He's been attacked so viciously. If only, if only he had some course of action. Like, he's gonna, he's gonna fat shame Ryan. Like, we already know it's coming. He's gonna say he's not a real comedian. I mean, this is a fucking 34 minute video. Like, <sighs> cancellation kink. Dude, new kink unlocked. Remember who these people are. Everyone who watches these videos and stars in these videos, in reality, could- Why are there so many signs about his dick stinking? Yeah, it's like his thing. It's like his like punchline in his stand-up bits where he goes, my dick stinks. And then everyone laughs because it's funny. Everyone who watches these videos and stars in these videos, in reality, could go on a season of Love on the Spectrum. Okay, so everyone who likes Ryan's videos is on the autism spectrum. And that means they're wrong about the things that they say. That's awesome. Now what I will say before we get into the video, and this is a video about a guy called Mr. Beard. He doesn't even have a beard, which is just fucking, that's cultural appropriation right there. What, what a good joke. Conservatives love just acting like they have a point. <laughs> they love just being like, see, that's uh, cultural appropriation. See, that's uh, the real racism. Hmm, hypocritical much? And it's like, no, you're just, you're just being, you're just being stupid. Like you're just not making a point right now. It's culture. Yeah. Beard culture. Also, isn't that his, like, I'm pretty sure that's his, just his last name. No brain between these ears. He's just saying half-written statements that are supposed to be jokes. Yeah. He's just like, if he yells it loud enough, maybe it'll be funny. What I will say- He looks like Jacksepticeye gone wrong. <laughs> hey, is this? Ladies and gentlemen, we are really putting a lot of effort into the Patreon now. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bitch. Days a week for you. I oh remember God. a few weeks ago, you fucking tight ass. Now, ladies and gents, you may remember a few weeks ago, I brought you a video about a young man by the name of Noah. Noah was very- Oh, he talked about Noah too? Oh, that's awesome. Very mad at me because I made fun of a topic that he loves oh so dearly, body positivity. I was being fat phobic and Noah was fucking pissed. Okay, so I got it. I got it twisted. Noah did the fat phobia video and Ryan, I believe, did the transphobia video. Because this guy's like all of it. He's racist, he's homophobic, he's transphobic. And I think if I did a video, if I added my, my Pokemon Platinum to the mix, to the trilogy, it would probably be about his racism or homophobia. What is this, a, a crossover, crossover episode? episode? Yeah, literally. Now, Noah, or Todd Flanders, as he is now known by the world, he was really- What? Like, I'm sure that's a reference to his video, re like, replying to Noah. Yeah, Noah was so angry, as is typical with a Noah. Noah's a very angry guy. <laughs> but no, like, I, I don't get, I don't get how this comparison works. Like, it's a reference to the other, to his other video, but out of context, this comparison makes no sense. Noah is like a buff, mustached, like, Chad. It's like the opposite. It was originally Ned Flanders, but Ned Flanders... <laughs> What? That's such a fucking weak comparison. Yeah, Noah was screaming and farting and shitting in his pants. That's such a sh- This doesn't make any sense. He just has a mustache. Different hair, no glasses, different style. Noah's got a fucking tattoo sleeve. 
Flanders is too damn sexy, stupid sexy Flanders. So I named him Todd Flanders. You can call him Todd. Anyway, Todd. That's so weak. You're a comedian? And you couldn't even fucking make fun of Noah? Not that it's like easy to do, but like that's what you have? That's your best? That's pathetic. No, no, Noah doesn't wear glasses, ever. Todd is very pro-fat liberation. Whatever the fuck that means. No, he's not like pro anything. He's just anti being an asshole. <laughs> That's not true. Noah is pro certain things, of course. He's pro good things, typically. He's also pro like George W. Bush. I'm just kidding. Whatever the fuck that means, it's not self, yeah. Is it not self-explanatory? Well, and it's like, Noah brought up a lot of like science that counters Isaac's idiotic fat phobic worldview. He wants to liberate the fat people. Okay. <laughs> Here's my Noah roast. Noah's voice sounds like a m millennial version of that Ferris Bueller professor. Bueller? What's that guy's deal? See, that's good. And I think he would uh, like think that that's funny. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's it, it, like, it's accurate. Pretty bold for a guy that looks like a bearded Gerber baby. <laughs> I love the idea, like, cause like that just draws me to his like weird hairline. I love the idea of like saying like you have like a baby's hairline. It's not even a concrete worldview, just a, an opinion that gets him attention. Yeah. Don't disrespect Noah's porn mustache. He is hot, way hotter than this Walmart PewDiePie. I mean, yeah, Noah's very attractive. That's why he had to call him Todd Flanders. Cause maybe if he like disassociates masculinity from, from Noah, people will find him as attractive. Man's beard has pubic lice. I don't know if you break him out of concentration camp or all you can eat buffets. See, that's funny because fat people are always at all you can eat buffets. He fights tooth and nail to stop the fat ladies from being ridiculed worldwide. And obviously you shouldn't be ridiculed for just being fat, but they are being ridiculed because of the messages they are spreading. So what's the message that they're spreading with the with the oh all you can God. eat buffet joke? Like he just ridiculed all fat people. This guy looks like he sleeps in a bar. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Conservatives don't compare things to the Holocaust. Impossible challenge. Yeah, you shouldn't be ridicul ridiculed for being fat. By the way, you're liberating fat people from all you can eat buffets. Looks like he tells the waitress to smile, sweetheart. Yeah. All right. Shit like extremely obese people are super attractive. And, and if you're like that, you should just remain like that and never try to change yourself. All that Tess Holiday shit, all that garbage. Is why do you act like that's intrinsic to fat people and all fat people think that way? He sounds like he's waiting to get a gold star for his jokes. Yeah, he has like a like a crowd pause even in his YouTube videos. Lizzo is tons more attractive than him. That's true. Lizzo is infinitely more attractive than this guy and that's 100% personality. And like physicality, of course, too, because this guy looks very disheveled. But also like just in terms of personality, it's like not even a contest. He looks like he would tell me to stop wearing makeup. Is fucking Todd Flanders' M.O. That's his thing. Well, you can't, you can't just pull him up with the bisexual lighting looking all fucking fab and be like, what the fuck is this guy? What the fuck? This is like an, I think you should leave bit where like fucking, fucking Tim Robinson is standing on a fucking white background and he pulls up like his wife's new boyfriend and he's like, my wife divorced me. This is my wife's new boyfriend. And he looks like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger when he won Mr. Universe and he's jacked his shit. And he's like, this guy doesn't even look that good. Why did she leave me for him? He's an accountant. He's a lawyer and a doctor. He provides for the family. I do that too. I work 14 hours a week at 7-Eleven. Sharon, if you're listening, the kids have learned to read. I did take them to school. I just didn't pick them up. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then he would just keep going. That's what this feels like. He's, he's trying so hard, so hard to make Noah not look like a very handsome young man. He looks like a rejected ZZ Top member. He would wear Ethan's shirt unironically. Hey, I'm wearing it unironically. This shirt's awesome. This man would call me a slur for wearing my hair in a ponytail. Well, today, I have someone even better. <laughs> ZZ Bottom! <laughs> that one got me good, I like that. Better. And following the Simpsons theme, my... <laughs> This guy looks like if Keemstar stayed out of the sunlight for a year. Duck Dynasty more like fuck you nasty. That's awesome. That's a great one. You guys are killing it right now. He looks like a guy who would take a girl swimming on the first date. Ugh. I feel like he bites. <laughs> May I introduce you to Ralph Wiggum. This cretin is known as Mr. Beard. 
dude, he is pissed. He's got some, he's got his fucking panties in a knot. Like if Keemstar got locked in a basement, yeah. Bold of you to assume Keemstar goes outside. No, he has to meet up with his girl. His girlfriend is half his age somehow. And he may- Mr. Beard. <laughs> he sounds like an orc from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> in a video about me called Australia's Dumbest Comedian. Fuck you. That's quite hurtful. But let's sit down and watch- Oh no. What? Dude, it's just a joke. It hurt your feelings? You're getting offended over a joke? Uh, okay. Woke culture strikes again. Keemstar date a woman above 30 impossible challenge. No, he's literally posted like women above 30? Uh, don't look attractive. Only, uh, women below the age of 22 are my type. <laughs> I think he's kind of triggered. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he got, he got fucking the one-two punch from Noah and Ryan. And this makes me really wish I hit him too. This guy's feelings matter, but nobody else's. Yeah, of course. Watch it as a family. I thought it would be great to make a commentary video on another Australian. And who better than the edgy comedian. Edgy, really? I get called that from people quite a bit from the left. Yeah, because it's like edgy is a term. He's gonna like think it means that like he's not gonna understand what Ryan means by edgy. Edgy is not a positive thing. Like he's not gonna take it positively, but like it also implies that you're trying really hard to get noticed. You know what I mean? Why are there two guns directly behind him? Were there? What kind of setup is this? Like you cannot see them unless he's pacing back and forth. Why is Danny and Drew's video on the side? I didn't even see that. It's usually from people who have never been to my show, never watched any of my stand up. You know, they're in the far left circle jerks of society. And dude, you go up on stage and you go, fat people, am I right? And then everyone goes, <laughs> and that's not a circle jerk. It sounds like he's practiced this in the mirror multiple times before filming and it's still shit. They think that that is a way to sort of break my spirit and call me an edgy comedian. <laughs> this man is dehydrated liver king. All that type of stuff. They use it as an insult because someone who is considered edgy is somewhat cringy in a way. Mm -hmm. You're like someone who is being offensive just for the sake of being offensive. Okay, he kind of did get it. It's also like, it's it's desperate and it's very pathetic. Like Dave Chappelle is becoming an edgy comedian. Ricky Gervais is an edgy comedian, but he's gonna wear it as a badge of honor. Now I may have been guilty of doing that in the past and so maybe you think I do that now. I don't really think I do. I think the jokes that I do that are seen as rather offensive uh, modeled in a way, and I'm not going to pretend I'm a fucking George Carlin or some crazy amazing comedian. I'm not Bill Burr or any of those guys, all right? Yeah, especially George Carlin. The, a cornerstone of George Carlin's comedy is being a fucking leftist, you dumbass. I'm just a dude who's 10 years into the game, gets on stage and tells jokes. That's all. Oh yeah, the painting behind him, he's the Mona Lisa. That's the joke. Do not compare Burr and Carlin. All I am. I'm not trying to make a political point or anything like that, right? I don't think I'm edgy in the sense that you think I am. Rap. Yeah, I'm not edgy. By the way, I'm wearing a fucking shirt that's like anti-vegan. Is like, look at how much I fucking want to eat meat. This guy thinks turf is a slur. Oh, for sure. Ralph William. I think I am just... A comic who won't hold back from the jokes that he thinks is funny. I want to go out and sell out shows, which I do. Shut the fuck up, Ralph Wiggum. In America, we would pronounce- Also, Ryan looks great in this video. I don't know how you're gonna tell me he looks like fucking Ralph Wiggum. It's such a fucking stretch. ...his name Isaac, but in Australia, it's pronounced I sack, like a sack of eyes. Spot on. Thank you. Thank you for finally pointing that out. My American people who watch this channel, take note, it's Isaac. All right, Isaac, Isaac, more of an I, letter I. He wants to eat me, don't tell me he's one of those goddamn rainbows. Yeah, Ryan looks great in this video. I and then Z A. This guy looks like he hasn't learned like how to shower again. Like he's been cryogenically frozen from 1992 and he's like scared of being clean again. See, Isaac. It's definitely not Isaac, all right? You fucking lunatics. Now, it might be stupid for me to be making a video criticizing Isaac. He is one of the most famous comedians in Australia. Stop it. You're making me blush, Ralph Wiggum. My God. It's not a big place, brother. Um, he took Ryan's joke and stretched it and ruined it. I mean, yeah. I mean, that is how you pronounce it. It's, it's, it's Isaac, not. Not Isaac, but I'm still saying Isaac because that's how it works with my accent. I'm not gonna call him Isaac. It doesn't work. What Simpsons character do you think Isaac looks like? 
I'm going for groundskeeper Willy without the red hair. Doesn't look like a Simpsons character because he looks like a fucking freak. Because Simpsons characters are designed to be appealing to some extent. He looks like he's yet to discover fire. But I tell you what, as a part of my welcome to country, I will say to you the most Australian thing possible that is absolutely warranted here from me to you. Go and get fucked, you fucking no. Oh my god, I like spaced out. What is he even replying to? Edgy humor feels like when you're nine years old and need to feel like you have power over something So you get that power from getting reactions out of people good or bad. Yeah, tr that's I think that's very accurate Yeah, he's definitely not mad guys. He's not mad at all. You fucking Now my personal opinion is that Isaac is a transphobic fat phobic misogynist but I don't want this to be my main focus because he clearly gets turned on when people call him these things. Turned on, you reckon? Yeah, nothing gets me stiffer than seeing people call me a racist misogynist. Nothing gets me harder than getting called an Islamophobic piece of shit. Bro, you've made videos replying to everybody who's made videos about you. You constantly talk about how you're getting canceled because it's, I literally called it in the beginning. He has a kink. He has a kink for this. He loves it. His comedy reminds me of when we said cool is an acronym for constipated, overrated, out of style, loser. Yeah. It's all he talks about. Stiffa. <laughs> yeah, he's loving it. Look at his fucking face. He loves this. Stop reacting to men who like kids. God damn. Jack Dorsey. <laughs> he looks like Jack Dorsey if he never invented anything. All of those terms mean nothing. Nothing I've ever said on this channel wasn't based in fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, racists never think they're right, actually. <laughs> that is awesome. He's like, I can't be racist because I'm right. <laughs> Maybe something I've said. I have made three videos for four fucking years. But particularly- Three videos for four years, what does that mean? Particularly when I'm calling a spade a spade and relying on technical knowledge or scientific knowledge. But your scientific knowledge is wrong. And that's what both Ryan and Noah have pointed out. And then you call me a racist or a misogynist or a sexist based on that? I mean, if I've got science at my side, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't though. That's the, the point he's about to make. Nothing makes edgy. Also, yeah, he's got fucking Ryan, Noah, I don't know what this is, his own video, and then fucking the Hard Rock Nick collab that Danny and Drew did years back. He's got his fucking recommendations on. Comedians jizz in their pants faster than being called a bigot because it fuels their victim narrative that the woke mob is trying to cancel me. So go subscribe to my shitty podcast, Cancel Me Now. Hey, 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 He's hey, right. hey, hey. You say what you want about me. You talk as much shit about me as you want. But I'll tell you what, you will not talk negatively about Australia's number one podcast and Zimbabwe's number, where is it? 214th most popular podcast, all right? Get it to number one on Zimbabwe. Today, I'm Ryan popped off in this video. Ryan did a great job in this video. This is just so annoying. Yeah, also Ryan's Australian accent's really good, but also his girlfriend's Australian, so it doesn't count. He's cheating. He looked like he'd get his head smashed with a rock by his caveman friends. Spotify now. Basically the only comedian who has ever actually been fully canceled is Bill Cosby. Now, Mr. Beard here, or Ralph Wiggum as we call him, goes on to explain that I've never actually been canceled. I <clears throat> Two days ago, three days ago, four days ago, five days ago, 10 days ago, 11 days ago, 12 days ago, 13 days ago, two weeks ago. Sounds like he's doing pretty good. 100K average, a little less than that, maybe a little more. Jesus. I just use it as a marketing tactic. To that yeah. That I say, yeah, duh. Of course. Oh nothing pushes God. views. Yeah, nothing really? pushes tickets, like getting canceled. Okay, so he's just saying it. He He's just saying it. Okay, great. That's annoying and bad to do. His channel banner is just more pictures of him. I know, it's funny. People want to be a part of it. They're interested. They want to know why this guy has been canceled. Has he been canceled for a genuine reason or is he just a comedian telling jokes on stage that definitely doesn't deserve it? That's not happened though. Like you're appealing to a very annoying base by lying to them. It's a little unethical. But what the boy with the radio announcer's fake voice won't tell you is it does have real life repercussions. Sure, the death threats aren't wonderful. I have been told so many times that I'm going to be killed or they're gonna rape someone in my family. 
that's, I mean, that's the cost of being edgy on the internet and being on the internet in general. Like, I'm sorry that it's not good. It's unacceptable. But at the same time, like, that's just what being on the internet has always been like. You can never, you can't just fucking deflect and be like, I get death threats. I get sexual assault threats on my family. It's like, yeah. Are they from fucking Ryan? No, that's not what we're talking about right now. It's like being arrested for murder and you're like, but I got a parking ticket. <laughs> Skin my dogs. After the Christchurch massacre joke went viral. When Which was a fucked up joke, asshole. You made a joke about people dying and people were like, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> blood for blood. <laughs> Just kidding, it's not right. It's fucked up. And I was saying that was too soon, even though I did it two weeks after it happened. I received 67,000 DMs, message requests on Instagram. That's a lot. And mm -hmm. what's worse than all that, because I'm used to that type of shit. What's worse than that is when sponsors pull out. Dude, if sponsors pull out, you have no fucking reason oh to, God. like, you have no one to blame. Thank you, Waltz, for the follow. You have no one to blame but your fucking self. They pulled out because your joke was bad. Sponsors don't fucking constantly monitor your content. So when you get away with something like that and people say, hey, what the fuck is this? Also, he's, he, literally, he just made the fucking classic, like, I get death threats. I'm so sad. What's worse than that is when fucking sponsors don't want to give me money. So apparently the death threats aren't that bad if losing sponsors is worse. He looks like he sends audition tapes to Big Brother every season and says this time's going to be it. I can feel it. It really does have a financial effect on this channel. I've got people that rely on me for work. Shut the fuck up, dude. It doesn't affect the channel. You fucking sit around making reaction videos and you have a Patreon, you're fine. And you tour. Like it doesn't, like you don't need sponsors, clearly. I have an editor. I have a guy that does my thumbnails, the people who make the merch, all that type of stuff, the guys. Okay, do your own fucking thumbnails, not that hard. To sell the tickets, all that shit, they depend on me for income, to feed their families, feed their dogs, all that shit. So when people come for the sponsors of my show or my channel, whatever you want to call it. He's deflecting back again. He's like, my family is getting death threats. My employees are, you know, that threatens their income. It's like, okay, well, you don't have to pay yourself. It's like, yeah, please don't attack me, guys. It really hurts other people. <laughs> like, this is if Homelander from the boys was a niche internet micro celebrity. Kind of looks like my mom's old boyfriend that called me slurs. I think that's a good role for him. Where, yeah, what a working class icon. Is a whole guy just for thumbnails? That's a little weird. Thumbnails are, they take like fucking 10 minutes. And then the sponsors have to make this big announcement like, well, we cannot stand by Mr. Butterfield. Do you know what happens? I lose that on cash for like two, three months and then the sponsors come back. So yeah, it has real life repercussions, but they always come back, but in a world that's pretty fucked up. We should make sure they don't come back. Where, you know, Chris Rock gets attacked by Will Smith. Dave Chappelle gets tackled on stage. <laughs> Comedians are the real oppressed class. Comedians who have their reputation smeared because they are whatever pejorative term you want to use, whatever label you want to put on them, make them turn them into a horrible person. And I mean, Dave Chappelle did nothing to provoke that. Chris Rock did nothing to provoke. How could he have seen that coming? Man, he could have killed Chris Rock after all. You increase the likelihood of that person being attacked, right? That's what you do. So yeah, cheers, Ralphie boy. Thanks for fucking putting me on a pedestal to be, I don't know, attacked at a comedy show. But if you're gonna do that, fucking bring it on. I'll fuck you up. So all Ryan said was, this guy gets off when people say he gets canceled and he uses it as a marketing tactic. And he took us on a fucking tour. At first he was like, yeah, duh, obviously, but also I get death threats and the people who rely on me for income, um, think about them. Also comedians are the real victims of all violence. Also now you're enabling people to attack me. So it's like, but you admitted in the beginning that you do this on purpose. So maybe if you stopped doing that, maybe something would change. The only way that Isaac is being canceled is by his audience slowly losing interest in his content, True. causing him to get one tenth of the views that he used to. Sure, fair point. Fair point. Ralphie's not missing the mark there. The views are down on this channel. So thank you for watching. <laughs> you know, over a four year period of building 1.7 million subscribers, people leave the channel. People stop watching the channel. Other channels come in and take its place. The algorithm changes. Maybe someone's not interested in this, someone's not interested in that. Because I've made videos on such a variety of topics from Australia, right? That was what a lot of people come on for. Then politics, then vegans, then, you know, fat phobia, then all these different. Yeah, and like the ones that bang for him the most are the ones where he's just being a bigot. So he appeals to that base. And that's not good.
It's not funny, and it's bad overall. Ryan looks fresh as hell in this video. Meanwhile, Isaac looks like he washes his beard with Viagra. <laughs> Love when he has to admit Ryan's right. I mean, yeah, he is. Sort of topics. People come and they go based on the video, and that's fine. That's fine. I'm not watching every video's view count and going, oh my God, my life's over. What is real for me is the people that come to shows, and those numbers are increasing, and that's all I really care about. But I will say this, for as long as you watch my videos, I will endeavor to make them enjoyable, entertaining, and I'll always try and make them better. I He's really dropping the ball on that one. I didn't think this was fair. Comparing Welcome to Fat Talk, at 201,000 views to It's Okay To Be White. Now there is definitely a difference there. One was posted seven days ago when he made the video. The other was posted three years and eight months ago or 1,307 days ago. And when you look at the analytics over that same period of time, the seven days, one got 101,000, the other 241,000. Fuck me, Ralph William. Give me a bit of time to grow, big dick. Recently, Isaac pissed off a bunch of people when he posted this on TikTok. Okay, I'm gonna freak everybody out. I'm gonna upset some people and I enjoy doing that. Female body hair is disgusting. So I'm sure if you've been involved in the channel for a while now, you'll remember the carry on that happened with this shit. When you make your career on being trending and shocking, you can't be surprised when people don't find it scandalous after the 10th scandal. Like no one cares when you're being canceled for the millionth time. Yeah, like that marketing tactic only works for like a year. Like people already don't care about Dave Chappelle anymore. Like you might get more people at your shows, but those people fucking suck. I sure do. It fucking blew up. People all over the world were talking about it to the point where I was asked to go on Dr. Phil and talk about it. Now in that actual video that I first posted to TikTok, I went on to say, listen. Body hair is disgusting, but I'm allowed to brush my beard with car oil. <laughs> you would call me a slur for having leg stubble. This isn't about chicks with a little bit of hair. This is about women who have massive hairy bushy underarms. Or Dude, that's not as literally like less than what I have. Body hair is so icky. Now let me explain why the 1920s were a better time period. Probably thinks Don Disho can be used as face wash, body wash, and shampoo. Yeah, he uses the Dr. Bronner's writing on the wall, so. Extremely bushy legs, and they think they're changing the world. I think that's a bit gross. There's like so much projection where he's like, they think they're changing the world. And it's like, no one is saying that just by like advocating against shaving your body hair, you're changing the world. Like, you know what does change the world? Like a coordinated marketing scheme to tell women for like decades. For like half a century that shaving is is necessary and that you are only attractive if you shave your body hair like that is changing the world and like recognizing that that comes from a corporate place and that you've been indoctrinated into thinking that way is important yeah who thinks they're changing the world like they might feel empowered or happy they might encourage others to do the same but they're not like no one's like this fantasy person doesn't exist why does he care so much because it gets him attention. Which is my complete right to say, as a person who has an opinion. In the same vein that if a woman wants to say that they, she finds beards disgusting, even though she's wrong, she can say it. Okay, but you're like objectively wrong and your opinion is misinformed. Like you can have a preference, of course, but like it doesn't matter. Yeah, she's wrong. But I'm right. He's in the pockets of big shaving. And Ryan points this out, so I wonder what he's gonna respond with. Women aren't hairless. I very much understand that. All I'm saying is if you've got a big hairy underarm, you're gross. You are gross. Gross, gross, gross. The sight of a woman's body hair triggers a feeling of disgust in you. Once again, if you watched the rest of the video, you would have me explain what I mean by that, but sure, I'm sure you're making your soy boy little- <sighs> You literally just said, dude, you literally just said, if you have a hairy underarm, it's really gross and you're gross. You did a fucking funny zoom in bit, bro. Gross, 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 gross. You did, what? I'm a trans dude and my cis ex asked me to shave my armpits. We did not date much longer. Yeah, fuck that. Especially if you're trans, yeah. Like, hey, trigger dysphoria for me. <laughs> Once again, if you watched the rest of the video, you would have me explain what I mean by that, but sure. But why wouldn't you explain it here, asshole? You didn't. You just did. You just said, you're gross, gross, gross. Oh, I'm sure you're making your soy boy little listeners very, very moist by watching this. Continue, dickhead. <laughs> if that's how he feels about Harry Pitts, I'd hate for him to see my ass. <laughs> In other words, women's body hair triggers you, which in my- He's gonna get real upset about that. My opinion is a pretty snowflake response to simply seeing hair. 
Let's talk about the history of- Is he gonna ignore it? Come on! shaving their underarms. How about let's fucking not? <laughs> Come on, dude. That's so funny. Fast forward this bit. What?! <laughs> <laughs> this stereotype that he's just skipping it. Do not inform me. I refuse to be informed. That's awesome. That women need to shave their underarms isn't based in any sort of logic. It's just a stereotype that has been pushed by razor companies for the last hundred years. Yeah. A lot of things have changed in the last hundred years, mate. For example, have you noticed people have been bathing more than once a week? What? How long does he think 100 years ago is? We're talking about the 1920s, not 1825. And also you just skipped all the fucking evidence. You skipped like the actual like time frame, bitch. My mind is melting, yeah, this is bad. But here's what I've really learned about all of this, particularly men like Ralph Wiggum here who pretend to like hairy underarmed women. They- So you're literally telling me that no one actually likes body hair on women. That's like, you're really, you're gonna tell me it's natural to dislike that? No, like I just don't get, he's, he's acting like disliking body hair is a natural thing. When Ryan very clearly laid out in the part that he skipped, he very clearly laid out why it's not. He will do absolutely anything to appear as an ally. I assume he smells these pits. I don't know what they do with it. Anything to get pussy, hey little Ralph. They want to appear like an ally so they don't appear like a threat so women will date them. That's just projection. That's just like, I can't see supporting or defending women's like bodily autonomy in any way unless it benefits me. I find it confusing that dudes like this think they're being brave by stating an opinion that's already the social norm. As a sex worker, I would love to inform him that many men love armpit hair. Yeah, absolutely. Body hair in general. There are a lot of men that either don't care or prefer women to have body hair. I don't understand this logic. Why would men and women smell differently? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I'm brave, but oh, thank you. <laughs> like... Yeah. Dude, you constantly act like you're fucking battling <laughs> in some like culture war. Like, <sighs> he's such a weasel. This guy's giving such pedo vibes. <laughs> yeah, most people find women's body hair disgusting. Wow, that's sexist. You no, pig? it's not. It's literally not. You just don't know what words mean. How shelters is he that he thinks body hair is the weirdest kink? It's very telling that he thinks people with body hair smell like he for sure doesn't shave anything. Yeah. Continue. Because we've all been manipulated by razor companies into thinking it's disgusting. These companies need us to think it's disgusting so they can keep selling razors. You're not brave for sharing this opinion. You're just being a shill for Gillette. That's it. True. The jig's up, ladies and gentlemen. He got me. But he's not actually sponsored by Gillette. So how does that work? Because I skipped the part where he explains how Gillette connects into this. Why do people think body hair equals unhygienic? Propaganda. All this time I've been working for Gillette. Gillette, the best a man can get. Use the promo code fucking Jesus Christ. Her pits are hairy. Don't you love them? Uh, down in the description below. God, he's so tilted. It's very uncomfortable. And you can get up to 5% off. Wow. When you call someone else's body disgusting because it doesn't fit your personal preference, that's called being an asshole. Yeah, probably, but- I love being an asshole. That's what he's gonna say. Get over it, dickhead. Everyone's an asshole. No one cares. The world is a tough place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can't just be like, well, the world is a tough fucking place, mate. And <laughs> you can't just say that because like Ryan has every right to criticize you because you are an asshole more so than most. And if you are so upset about me saying that un- Dude, you're getting upset. And my advice to you is the world's a tough fucking place, mate. <laughs> hair on chicks is gross. You are going to have a fucking tough life, whoever you are. I said Bro, if you get triggered by body hair, then your life must be hard. You can just fucking use this logic against you, you fucking idiot asshole. <laughs> the world's a tough place, let me make it worse. Uh, or I said this on Ryan's vid, but my mom went to West Germany in the late 70s and it was super common for women not to shave. Like, my mom was in the minority for shaving, especially during the winter. This isn't a new thing, yeah. Jack is well aware that he's being an asshole. 
On his YouTube channel, he claims that this was all a social experiment. I wanted to conduct a little social experiment the other- God, his beard looks worse in this video. Anyone who calls women chicks should be instantly degraded or disregarded. Same, both. I could be dying of hunger, but would never want to raid the snacks. This man holds in his beard. The day. I wanted to see if I could piss off an entire group of people. So I went to TikTok. Now, seriously, I was in my office thinking to myself, okay, how can I piss off the woke people on TikTok? Because it's mainly woke people. And what could I also do? Dude, what do you mean it's mainly woke people? Yeah, it, it does It does feel like a cop out. I punched my mom for a social experiment. <laughs> I just wanted to see how mad she could get. To make more content for myself. Aha! I'm gonna call underarms gross on chicks. But you actually think that though. You actually believe that. So there's no difference in you just saying it on TikTok versus you just saying it for content. The intent doesn't matter. Underarm hair, not underarms. Everyone has underarms, all right? Don't let them tell you the opposite. Underarm hairs on chicks are gross. I say that, everyone talks about it. It almost gets me on Dr. Phil. They pulled out someone had COVID, which is fuck. I kind of don't believe that. He very clearly is defending the stance that he said he quote unquote pretended to have. Yeah, everyone talks about it. A weak excuse, by the way, I was very excited. I even did the sound check for it. Anyway, point being, I made that video to annoy people to make content about. That is no secret. People do that all the time. So what? What an incredible experiment. When you <laughs> tell people that their bodies are disgusting, they get angry. I would have never predicted that outcome. Not the bodies, Ralph. Not the bodies, just in particular the hair growing on them. But you're still it's still body shaming though. It's still like like people don't look at their hair as separate from their body. You're just getting into semantics because you don't have anything else to say. This is like one degree from calling women females. I mean, he just says it's chicks, which isn't better. Not the bodies, the parts on the bodies. The bodies are fine. Who gives a shit? Beautiful, wonderful, fantastic. The hair though, gross. Isaac would probably respond to me by saying, Aw, chill out, mate. It's just a joke. Jokes like this, where the intention is just to piss women off. Where is the jo where is the joke? I'm- it's my personal opinion that- But he's just referencing an excuse you use a lot. I'm not attracted to chicks with hairy underarms, so I find it a little bit gross. I'm sorry that my opinions don't fall in line with your staunch fucking male feminist ally shit fucking- views just designed to get you pussy. I'm but your fucking views are designed to sell razors because your views are informed by corporate interests and you refuse to see that because you think you're a free thinker when you're not because you're dumb. Sorry they don't. I am also a comedian. I am also a comedian. I am also a comedian. I'm Idaho. Yes, of course you are. Comedians should be able to stand behind the- po No comment. He's just- the, the editor thought that was a good one. Political messages they promote without needing to always hide behind the cop-out of I was just joking. What am I jo what am I joking about, you fucking little shit? Okay, then replace a joke with social experiment, and he's making the same argument. You're still hiding behind the fact that it was an experiment when you're just fucking saying what you think. That's not an experiment. Telling people what I think experiment. Wonder what could happen. All right, I have opinions. In he was designed to get you pussy. I don't think he would want to have those. Like, isn't that the manly man goal? Well, he, like the idea that like, you know, male feminists only want to treat women like human beings to fuck them is A, it's just projection. But B, it's like the beta thing to do because a real alpha will show up, tell them their property, and then they'll fall in love and have a nuclear family. Videos. And some are political, some are just social, whatever. And then there's others that, I'm, that are jokes, but you can tell the difference if you're not a fucking idiot. Like if I say something and I'm in a serious tone of voice, that's probably a serious thing. If I say something and then I go, at the end of it. <laughs> okay guys, you see that? You see that? Just watch for that. Watch for his his tell. It's like in fucking Batman Arkham games, when like a guy's about to attack you, you have to press Y right above their head. Just watch for his little that's how you know he's joking. If I say something and then I go... So watch for that going forward. The end of it, it's probably a joke. If you can't work that out, what I'm <laughs> really saying and I genuinely believe and what no! I... No! Fuck! Jumbie! Moving on. Don't. You're a fucking idiot. This is a long video and I'm sorry, but this motherfucker did a 31 minute video just shitting on me and it continues to get better. So continue with me.
after receiving a ton so like i don't know i the fucking like you can't tell what i'm joking versus what i'm not like you haven't committed you said it was a social experiment but also it's you defended it like it's your actual thoughts so it's nothing nft ad <laughs> sorry guys press subscribe ton of backlash isaac posted a response video on youtube which in my opinion was some pussy shit i won't be told what is pussy shit and what is not pussy shit by you you are the personification of pussy shit that's not even that doesn't make any sense okay so here's what i don't understand here's what i really don't get about isaac's perspective on ryan is that ryan is going against not only social conventions but corporate conventions that are have like propagandized over a fucking century. So like Ryan is literally saying the opposite of what most men say. How is that pussy shit? Literally how? What makes that pussy shit? You know what I mean? Also, why didn't he just put the video up? Why did he have to put the fucking YouTube screen recording on there? Just fucking download the video and put it in your video. People who go with the grain are the real oppressors. Yeah, the people who think the way that they've been taught to think and the way everyone else thinks, they're the real victims. <laughs> I'm not talking about like, you know, a couple of days of growth of hair. Who gives a sh Also, Mr. Beard is just disagreeing with Ballsack. Ballsack spends too much time saying, I'm allowed to be an asshole. But Mr. Beard said he never said he's not allowed to. He just said it's shitty. He's allowed to disagree in the same way Ballsack is allowed to be an asshole. Yeah, agreed. Shit, right? Everyone's got hair. I'm talking about the chicks that have the big airy bushes and think they're changing the world. They're the chicks I'm talking about. The ones that think they're defeating the patriarchy by growing fucking moss under their arms. No one gives a shit, love. You're not achieving shit. Isaac will regularly make very inflammatory statements. Female body hair is disgusting. But then once he gets backlash, he'll walk the statement back to make himself seem more reasonable. Okay, sure, maybe I've done that in the past. Who hasn't? But in this case, you're dead wrong. If you just showed the rest of that clip that you just played, you would see that, I'm, that I actually say in that video, I'm not talking about just a little bit of hair, I'm talking about Big Bush. So at one point, is it acceptable? It's just funny to watch him squirm because he's clearly so pressed. Like, according to Isaac, a little bit is fine, but then there's a point where it's too much. Yeah, he asked him to show the rest of the clip while he skips over Ryan's fucking context. Yeah, like, does he have to measure how much armpit hair is acceptable? Then, like, you're not saying some is okay. And you didn't say that to begin with. You just said, it's disgusting. He didn't do that. You just sat there and lied to your audience to make someone else look bad. Cool. Which he would never do. He would never skip context in someone else's video to make them look bad. Lying by omission. Cool bye, mate. Killing it. Let's look at his recent video, 10 Reasons Woke Women Hate Men. This video is the type of video that would have probably gotten Isaac over a million views back in 2016, but thankfully it seems like a lot of the internet has moved on from watching these types of fear-mongering videos about woke women. I disagree. I disagree. People <laughs> talked about it in 2016. I disagree. The internet is exactly the same as it was in 2016. Armbrit hair goes so fucking fast, too. You'd, you'd have to have a razor on you at all times to please him. Yeah. People talked about it in 2015. And in 2016, people were like, that's such a 2015 thing to say. And in 2015, people were like, that's a 2014 thing to say. Now the popular thing to say is it's such a 2016 thing to say. Mate, there are still insane people running around. Mm-hmm. There are still insane people running around with YouTube channels that think it's okay to shit on women for no reason. Talking mad shit, particularly about poor, defenseless, straight white men. I know, it's tough. Uh, and I feel like at least somebody, and there's a lot of people that do it, but at least somebody in Australia should go, well, this is bullshit. Hmm? Call a spade a spade and say that is fucking bullshit. I don't know what, what he's I saying. Do. What's bullshit? Because he did the, oh, it's so hard to be a straight white man. But then he's like, but it's bullshit that you make fun of us. <laughs> this guy looks like he puts fucking mayo on fucking everything. Now, if you don't like that, you don't have to watch it. You can hang out with Mr. Beard and he's fucking, geez, you need a fucking beard. Honestly, honestly, you need a fucking beard. And I actually thought that video that he's referring to wasn't a bad video. And thank you for allowing it to be. Interesting that he doesn't choose a picture that's in the video. He chooses a completely different picture that's older. Seen by more people, I appreciate that. Uh, this is a tactic 
used by people on BreadTube all the time, the 2016 thing. Now, I know what these people are like. You may not. These people are the type of people that sit at a home on a Friday night, have a wet dream about Karl Marx, read the Communist Manifesto, and then try to find someone on the internet who seems to be speaking with some facts and knowledge. That's crazy. I don't know why body hair grosses him out so much. Dude's beard looks thick enough to nest birds. I know, but he's a man, so it's different. That's crazy. He like has to keep making shit up. He just has to keep making up a guy. He can't not. He just has to make shit up because he doesn't know how to address Ryan's points head on. And then cry about that. That is what these bread tubers are like. Point being, yes, that topic was very popular in 2016, but it still is because the problem still exists. So maybe we need to make more videos about that. This video is also, filled- Also, Ryan's not a communist. I don't believe Ryan would identify as a communist at all. You're not even really a bread tuber either. With exaggerated stereotypes and outright lies about feminists. Outright lies, this would be good. Please tell me what I was lying about. Number 10, toxic masculinity. If there has been a buzzword over the past five years or so, toxic masculinity has to be up there with some of the greats. By definition, it is a set of attitudes and ways of behaving stereotypically associated with or expected of men. It's regardless of having a negative impact on men and society as a whole. So it's basically whatever men do, that is toxic. Has Isaac considered that people grow their body hair on purpose so that dickheads like him don't talk to them? No, <laughs> he has not masculinity. Anything that's bad that a man does is toxic masculinity. Does anyone disagree? Yes. You hear this shit in the media all the time and no, on don't. social media. All the time. Oh social media, God. yeah. Depending yeah, on who you follow. Yeah, reading a definition and then summarizing it incorrectly. That's comedy. But let's wait. I'm sure he's got a gotcha moment ready to go. Anything bad that a female does is not toxic femininity. It is brave, powerful, wonderful and fantastic. No one says that. He just makes up guy. He just makes shit up. Yay. When have feminists ever claimed that women can't be toxic? I'm not sure when they've claimed that, but rather than- But I see that on TikTok all the time. It's like, okay, great. I'm glad that you see fucking annoying people on TikTok and that's how you build all of your world politics. Accepting women can be toxic, they like to push the blame onto other people. In this Who? case, men, masculinity, toxic masculinity, the patriarchy. When? Itself. No feminist on the entire planet believes that female empowerment means that women can just be as toxic as they want to be and go around committing whatever crimes they oh want to God. without being Feel held responsible. Feminist. That is obviously fucking stupid. Um, I tend to agree. I don't think I ever said that women get away with crimes, although they do get more lenient sentences. Yeah, and that's yeah, not, that's not because women, that's, that is patriarchal. That infantilizes women. Just because it like benefits them on paper doesn't mean anything. That's a topic for another video. On social media, everything that dudes do is deemed toxic masculinity. When Will Smith the other week slapped Chris Rock because Will Smith is a big old pussy, uh, that was I, what do you mean he's a big old pussy? He slapped Chris Rock in front of the world. That's awesome. <laughs> I think it's so funny when people say that like, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock because he's a beta. And it's like, bro, you would never have the courage to do something like that. Like this is a fucking gigantic balls move. Whether you think it's good or good or bad, like it's fucking ballsy. That's crazy. That was not to, you can't blame Will Smith for that. You blame toxic masculinity. Huh? <laughs> and like, you can say that Will Smith is informed by toxic masculinity. Like he doesn't understand how it works. He doesn't know. Like all other conservatives, he just doesn't know. No one is blaming toxic masculinity. They're blaming Will Smith for exhibiting toxic masculinity. That's the same thing. No, it's not. It is if you're stupid. <laughs> Dickhead. It's not toxic masculinity's fault. It's because he has toxic masculinity. Yeah. yeah, because toxic masculinity isn't a person that can be blamed. You have a choice whether or not you exhibit toxic masculinity. It got me. It's like saying that Auntie Cheryl who just died of COVID, it's not COVID's fault. It's her fault for exhibiting COVID. Fuck you. Yeah, blaming the concept of murder for murdering people. That's what he's trying to do or acting like people do. You Artie Cheryl. What Ralph is doing is he's playing word games. He tries to confuse people. That's what you're doing, you stupid piece of shit. Sound intellectual by doing so. This is one of their main tactics is to sound more intelligent than who they're talking down to. And just so happens in my video, every second word's fucked. So it's not hard. If someone commits murder, we don't blame murder. We blame the person for committing murder. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, 
Good one. So I assume you're pro guns then. What does that mean? 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 He just moved on. Maybe we shouldn't blame all men for this. Maybe we should blame the rotten eggs that are the ones that are living their lives like this. No one is blaming all men. Bullshit. I saw a TikTok that said all men are trash. I saw a Twitter post that had a thousand likes that said, I hate men. Explain that. That's literally what he's gonna say. That's literally his argument. Bull fucking shit, you disingenuous little f How can you just lie? You smug little fucking head. How can you just lie about shit like that? And then because you're pretending to be this all powerful pseudo intellectual, you expect- That's fucking projection. Oh my God. Expect everyone to believe you. Fucking suck me off, mate. It is so well known that everyone blames men that when you say not all men, you are criticized. No, it's so well known that no one blames all men that when you say not all men, you're criticized because everybody already knows it's not all men, you fucking dumbass. Like he really does think he's just, he, he does view himself as a victim. Like he's just that stupid. If a man assaults a woman, all men aren't responsible for that assault. Wow, thank you for finally agreeing with me. I'm glad you're on team butt smart. It's great to have you on the team, big fella. Like I would love one example of someone who thinks otherwise. Obviously. Thank you. The number nine, slut shaming. What does slut shaming mean? It is the action or fact of stigmatizing a woman for engaging in behavior judged to be promiscuous or sexually provocative. I think the reason that society looks down on women who have slept with a lot of people or are easy in this situation is because it's so simple for them to get sex. For a man to get a lot of sex, he's gotta be funny, intelligent, he's gotta be all these things, he's gotta be muscular, he's gotta be good looking. For a lady to get sex, all she has to do is just slightly open her fucking legs. I have never understood this argument. What you're saying is that it's easy for women to get sex because men usually want sex. And it's not easy for men to get sex because women usually don't want sex. So if men are the ones who usually want sex, then what you're saying is by default, men are sluts. Yes, 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 yes. That is exactly what we're saying. We are big dirty sluts. Well See, it's funny. It's funny because he agrees and said it funny. Well, at least in our minds. See, we want sex all the time, but we can't get it all the time. Like if you achieve something- Speak for yourself, asshole. Really hard in life, people look at you and go, wow, that's so great, well done. But if you achieve something that's really easily achievable all the time, say putting your shoes on every day, the first time you do it, wow, well done, how good are you? The 100th time, no one gives a fuck anymore. No one cares anymore, because you do it all the time and it's easy. As a society, we seem to look down on people who take the path of least resistance. And to get fucked by a thousand guys is the path of least resistance. What does he mean by that? Do you think it's easy to be a woman? <laughs> And if women usually don't want sex, yeah, he just added himself as bitchless. Then by default, women aren't sluts. But you're saying it makes sense to shame a woman when she decides to want sex as much as men want sex? So if we should shame women for wanting sex as much as men do, then why aren't we also shaming the men for wanting sex? You're a massive slut because you want sex as much as men do, and that is not okay. I'm so confused. What I'm saying here is, okay, and stick with me. It's easier for women to have sex, therefore it's abundant. For men, they want it all the time, but they can't get it. It's not so abundant. I'll He's just repeating himself. It's such a messed up mentality. It is. I don't get it. Change it, okay? This is a direct question to you, Mr. Ralph Wiggumbeard. How many men could one woman sleep with in a week before you think it's gross? Is it one? Not really. Two? Nah. Three? Four? Five? Six? Seven? Eight? Nine? Are you saying it's gross yet? Would you think that person is a bit gross? What about a no. hundred? What about a thousand men? If I met someone who said, I've slept with a thousand men this week, I would be absolutely in shock and just fully impressed. 
Are men actually this hypersexual, like where they think about sex all the time? Or is that just a stereotype? It's different for everybody. Like men tend to be hypersexual because I think it's societal more than biological. A lot of people like to think it's biological, but I think it's literally just societal. And I think the same goes for women being less sexual, but I don't know. Yeah, a thousand guys in one week is like a 24 seven job. And yeah, no amount is gross because sex isn't gross unless you are sex repulsed, which I guess that's valid. Men in one week. Would you admit that that's a little bit gross? That's no. a lot of cum. How many women could a man sleep with in a week and you would look at that and go, nice, how are you doing that? Is it one, ten, a hundred, a thousand? If a man's rooting a thousand women a week, you'd, you wouldn't be thinking gross. Like you might think a little bit gross, it is a little bit gross. You'd probably look at him and go, how the fuck are you doing that? Can you teach me the tools of the trade, sir? Woke women. I literally am more impressed by a woman having that much sex because sex for women is, you know, a different kind of experience. Yeah, and that's projection. That's literally just projection. He's like, you think like me, right? You think just like me? And believe that all men are dangerous. I've already touched on this already in this video, but I feel it is important to really highlight it. A generation of young women between the ages of 14 to 30, maybe even a little bit older, are learning that not only are men dangerous, that they should be scared of them at all times. <laughs> all times. Yeah, people are saying that. I know this guy thinks men who get laid a lot are chads. I think women who get laid a lot are sluts. Of course, he literally just said that. A thousand people a week is 142 people per day. That's awesome. I literally cannot change my perspective, even, even in a hypothetical situation that explicitly shows why my thinking is contradictory. And avoid them at all costs. He thinks squirt is pee for sure. <laughs> he doesn't believe that women could squirt at all. He doesn't believe in female orgasm. The vast majority of women don't actually believe that all men are dangerous. When they say this, they are exaggerating. Wow. And also like literally no one says that. And also it's not that all men are dangerous. It's that all men have the potential to be dangerous under like the way that they're raised in society and the way that the their like mindset typically is. Thank you. Thank you so much for mansplaining what women mean. In this next section, I say that all male feminists are creeps. And he compares that to how I generalize saying it's not all men. Here lies the issue with that logic. I'm right. He just has nothing to say. He's like that guy that said women are always more horny after sex. Like he's so out of touch, it's crazy. This guy thinks the clit is a myth by big female. Yeah, big female. That is all. This just shows me that you're not actually against people making generalizations, you're just against women doing it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You got me. A male feminist is just any man who believes that men and women should be equal. But that would mean that most people, most men, are male feminists. I love when fucking idiots do this. Destiny did this when he debated Mr. Beard about, like, the concept of being non-binary, which is just a weird thing to insist on debating um, on Destiny's end. But, like, they love doing this, where they're like, well, if that's the case, then everyone should be male feminist. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Congratulations. Who the fuck believes that men and women aren't equal? Who? What was the thing you said about, like, if a woman had a bunch of sex, you would think it's gross, but a man had a bunch of sex, you'd think it's normal? And what was the thing you said about, like, body hair? Like, sure, there's some people, but they're fucking horrible pieces of shit, right? Yeah, I'd say that. It just so happens that feminists, like proper, full-on feminists, I'm not talking about old-school feminism, I'm talking about the fourth wave, fifth wave, whatever, and the male feminists all seem to have the same opinion. Oh that it's not so much about yeah, people man. being equal, it's about pushing women forward, only blaming men, and saying that everything to do with males is evil. Many years ago, just to treat others with respect was the main goal. But now they've moved the goalpost so many times, it no longer means that. Then yeah, where is the love? Really, we just want to be one race, the human race. Women and men are equal because they both don't want to have sex with me. <laughs> now for you to be considered a feminist or a male feminist, you have to scream from the rooftops how bad men are. It's not even that. It's just that like recognizing that men, like how many waves of feminism do you really need where like liberalism and capitalism has like watered it down to what Isaac thinks feminism really is, which is just men and women should be equal. When like how many of those waves do you need that have been fucking watered down until people start acting like, yeah, fuck this, fuck patriarchal systems, fuck systems that have been in place since the oh foundation of society, of like Western society. 
and like people are mad like like you can only tolerate so much lack of progress because like what has feminism done up until like modern feminism what was feminism doing in like fucking the early 2000s <laughs> like the wage gap still exists you know there's still no like state-sponsored fucking parental leave child care is still not taken care of and i mean even other than that like misogyny is still rampant in criminal justice like sexual assault is still very normalized and stigmatized against uh the victims like i don't know can't wait for this guy to learn about pronouns oh yeah you have to absolutely portray them as the enemy and you have to show that you are an ally that you are helping the cause i am yeah, you have to show that you're an ally. Oh no, an ally to a movement that's good. Why would you ever want to be that? I'm very left wing and what you would probably consider woke, but I am nothing like the extreme straw man that you have created of what woke feminists are like. You are though, because I keep making the straw man worse <laughs> and I keep skipping in your video. I had to have a long talk with my husband the other day because the word feminism has been twisted so bad by conservatives. English is in his first language, yeah. And I am willing to bet that the vast, vast majority of feminists would agree with everything I have said. Well, let's not generalize, mate. That's six. But they probably will, and they probably will agree with everything you've said because you are reading from their fucking cliff notes, mate. He's not though. Pronouns weren't invented until 2014. That's true. This dude's got a shit. Of, this dude's got to shit himself over verbs and adjectives. Wait till he hears about adverbs. A straw man can be whatever he wants it to be. Exactly. Let's not generalize while constantly talking about how all feminists hate men. Yeah, it's very confusing. It's all the same talking points. It's all the same doctrine. You're not allowed to misstep, otherwise you will be cast away and never seen or heard from again. Who? What? What are you talking about? You talking about what? What are you? Are you talking about Louis C.K.? What are you talking about? Fucking? Are you talking about Bill Cosby? He's not in jail anymore. You know that, right? Louis C.K. still does tours. He won a Grammy. Who are you talking about? Literally, who? Harvey Weinstein? Is he like trying to say that like people like that shouldn't go to jail or? Fuck, this video is really bad. It's like a religion. There's very little difference between your thoughts and beliefs ever. There is to be no change. There is to be no divergence. Having not a lot of difference in your thoughts and beliefs implies that you have like consistency and your thoughts align with your beliefs. I mean, that my little friend, that is a woeful way to live your life. You do not have the <sighs> ability to think critically. <laughs> Says the guy who literally thinks he's like the victim here. That he's like in danger. You don't. Thinking critically is shameful in your world. You literally skipped his video at like a crucial part that would have educated you. It's probably toxic masculinity as well. It's very common for people in his world to paint me with a brush of transphobia or homophobia or sexism or whatever because I dare to not follow their dogma. That's not even remotely true. That is it. That is literally why they do it. These people are so terrified of challenging their own belief system. They are terrified of it. And they will base their life and their career on going on the defensive with anyone who dares to question it. That is what has happened with this little dude and why he made a 31 fucking minute video about- Bro, your video's 34 minutes, it's longer. Yeah, what dogma? At me, therefore I have to make a longer fucking video so I can watch the whole fucking thing. And it's painful for everybody. Let's look at a few more examples of Isaac blatantly contradicting himself. Isaac has a long-running beef with the leftist streamer Vosh that started because Vosh made a joke that Isaac is a child groomer. Tick tock. All right, can we just agree that anyone who talks like this um, is probably a groomer? He, this guy, this this groomer, I, I'm fair saying it, yeah. This guy probably like fucks kids. Isaac was not very happy about this. Oh, I can't imagine why. I don't like Vosh at all. Fuck Vosh. But that was kind of funny. <laughs> I cannot imagine why. I think if someone calls someone that and they're not upset about it, that's someone you want to keep a fucking eye on. Now, of course, Vosh apologized for saying that. Uh, rightfully so. He was probably worried about being sued and he fucking sh <laughs> Yeah, good luck. Should have been. But I don't think the irony was ever lost on anyone that Vosh was claiming that about someone else. Anyway, just saying. That's true. Allegedly, just saying, allegedly. But let's see where Chief Wiggum's son's going with this. After this, there was a controversy where Vosh got into an argument on Twitter with JK Rowling, <laughs> where Vosh made a misogynistic joke in response to JK being transphobic. 
Yeah, weird of us to call someone else a child predator, exactly. This this fucking tweet was so stupid, dude. Like, I think it's totally fine to clown on people, and I think it's totally fine to, like, shit on J.K. Rowling. But, like, if you are so stupid and so, like, unable to control yourself and so, like, thoughtless in your rhetoric that you end up getting, like, misconstrued as, like, a genuine actor, then, and, like, she ended up using this as being, like, this is what the trans people want. And it's, like... <sighs> Cool, man. <laughs> the way you doubled down so hard was definitely insane, yeah. Heck. He said this to J.K. Rowling after she made a statement about trans people. He tells her and women to be quiet. I just, I genuinely didn't say that it was a joke. I didn't know. I thought he was just being serious. That's hilarious, and I think that's a lie. <laughs> and I also found many of his responses to this extremely hypocritical. First, he says that he respects J.K. Rowling for speaking out about her beliefs. J.K. Rowling, whether you agree or disagree with her, she has the balls, the fanny flaps. No. So, okay, J.K. Rowling being like, hey, marginalized people, people who are extremely marginalized who uh, once look up, looked up to me, I hate you and you should die. Um, that's brave. Oh but Will Smith going up in front of the entire planet and bitch slapping someone on stage at the Oscars, that's pussy shit. I don't understand that line of thinking at all. To go out there and talk about what she genuinely believes and you have to respect that. Whether you believe it or not, whether you agree with her or not, if she goes out there and talks about what she genuinely believes, that's some good shit. She is risking, mate her career by not playing by your woke rules. It's not even that she's not playing by woke rules. She's just, like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fucking pull up fucking David Duke, former leader of the KKK. How brave is he? He's not playing by your woke rules. Like, you can't just make that excuse. You can't excuse bigotry by being like, but people are gonna get mad at you for it. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> You actually don't have to respect that. What has happened to her career? What has she risked? She's still the most famous successful author of all time. Yeah, she's not risking anything. She's also not going with anyone's dogma apart from like, like, do you think trans people rule the world? Do you think trans people are like a dominant force in society? She's going with the grain. And it's strange to me how much Isaac loves when people just behave like normal. They just act according to all like societal and, and cultural expectations and don't deviate from that at all. That's brave to Isaac is just being bigoted in the normal way that everyone fucking is in fucking cis heteronormative society. That's what's fucking interesting about it and brave about it in your world. It's not interesting or brave. You just like it. <laughs> Ralph, she would be bullied into submission and if she doesn't play by the rules, she doesn't get any more work. That's how your world operates. Yeah, people swear up and down that transphobes are so rare. Meanwhile, every like comedy movie in the 90s was like, wait, a woman? But she has a penis. Boom. <laughs> like every fucking comedy had some fucking shit like that. Man in dress. And just like still, people like Isaac still think that shit's hilarious. She's an affluent white woman advocating for the further oppression of an extremely marginalized group instead of actual people in power. Not brave. Exactly. So yeah, I respect her. Okay, so let's wrap things up. I'm fucking done with this fucking piece of shit. If Isaac makes a response to this video, I'm sure he'll make some joke like, Fuck you, you woke soy boy. I can tell that you've been drinking too much soy milk because you're growing your own milkers. You better be careful. If those milkers grow too big, you might turn into a woman, which I would fully support because I am not transphobic. Uh, I think he is a closet fan of the channel. I would not be shocked if he has my merch. I won't be shocked. That's not a response to what he said. But also, I think uh, I think Isaac pre-watched this because he didn't fashion shame Ryan, which is a surprising amount of restraint, but I feel like he saw that part and was like, oh, I can't fall into his hands. Or did he just cut it out? Hopefully someday Isaac will stop attacking random trans teenagers on TikTok, stop antagonizing fat people, and stop trying to piss off feminists for views. Over my dead body, Ralph Wiggum. Ruffling feathers is fun, okay? And I like to throw those videos here or there whenever it sort of comes to be. Okay, but you know what ruffles feathers though? Literally just saying trans people are human beings. <laughs> you can ruffle feathers that way, but for some reason you choose not to. Ruffling feathers of the weakest people in society is good fun, Ralph. What do you mean the weakest people in society? I think he's talking about weakest as in like, you, you guys just can't take a joke. 
when in reality he means the most mar or what is is the reality is the most marginalized people in society. That's who he really likes to make fun of. Okay, it just fucking is. And for you to say that is hilarious because you and your little mate Todd Flanders in the same week uploaded the same video. So you're sitting there planning, oh, well, let's get let's get this guy. You're doing the same thing that I'm doing, mate. Is it was literally coincidence that they both did that because I was literally going to do it that same week too. Did you think this would hurt me? Shatter my confidence? Shut the fuck up, you minuscule little insignificant fuck. But I've saved the most terrifying and interesting part of this video for last. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here it is. Oh, does he does he do a music bit? I don't remember. Now that I've finally settled in here in Australia. He's here in my neck of the woods. Fuck off where full, mate. Well, just for you. Everybody else is welcome. You? Not so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be a good motherfucker. Peace and release me dick sticks. Toodaloo au revoir. Bye bye. Lady God, just fucking gibberish at the end of that. Yeah, that wasn't good. Has he only watched The Simpsons? Is the only thing he compares anyone to? I don't know. I think it's just because we're Americans. I think it's just because it's an American show. Local Aussie man would rather die than be a normal human being. We all know that the funniest jokes come from punching down at people who don't have the platform to defend themselves. Yeah, I, I'm genuinely surprised that he didn't fat shame Ryan, but I, I think he pre-watched or cut it out in advance. This Ryan beard bloke was on America's Got Talent a couple years ago. Homeschooled, had one song which was reasonably humorous, but couldn't back it up. Never had a girlfriend and no social skills and is now rocking a podcast without ever being out in the world and achieved zero judging others. Good on him. No. <laughs> beard having a quote-unquote girlfriend is the closest thing to a beard he's ever going to get. What are you calling Ryan gay? That's a little silly. He can't talk about the adventures of Bumber Toot and Winkly Knuckles because Americans just wouldn't get it. Yeah. Bad video. Make better videos next time.